What would happen if you replaced the Vandals, Goldfinger, and all those artists with some retro synth, added some animals, and put Tony Hawk in a boat? You'd get something that looks a little bit like Wave Break. Welcome everybody to I Dream of Indie. My name is Old Gamer Joe, and yes, today we are reviewing Wave Break on the Steam PC platform. This is a game that was previously released on Stadia, and it is also going to be available on the Nintendo Switch. Wave Break opens up with a quick tutorial, which will have you shredding the waves in no time, and while there is mouse keyboard support, players are encouraged to use a gamepad, which is perfectly fine with me because I suck at keyboard mouse. You're able to accelerate by pressing down the right trigger, and you'll want to hold and release the A button in order to perform a jump, and that's where the real fun comes in because once you're airborne, you can perform a variety of different tricks. A kickflip, for example, can be achieved by pressing towards the left while hitting the X button, and you can do various other grabs and techniques by mixing up those directions and using different face buttons. Fans of Tony Hawk will feel instantly familiar with this control scheme. I was never the best player at that game, but I was able to get a handle on things rather quickly. A boat isn't exactly the same as a skateboard, so things do feel a little floaty at first, but once you get used to it, it's quite enjoyable and easy enough to control. Of course, there are a few other techniques, and you'll learn more, including the ability to grind, which you will have to carefully balance along the edge of certain platforms in order to do. But what really makes this game stand out a bit is the combat, which is a neat idea. If you hold down the left bumper and hit the right bumper, you will in fact fire bullets, and there's a variety of different weapons depending on the game mode that you're playing. This game features features a full-on death match, but you can generally shoot at your opponents even if you're going for high scores. Let's get into those game modes though. First up is a career mode where you're placed into one of the game's five maps and tasked with collecting various different items, hitting high scores, and performing certain tricks in certain areas. This career mode is advertised as being the single player mode of the game, but we had dual monitors set up and as I'll touch on a little bit later again, we were actually able to at one point get the game to have us both be playing the career mode together, so I don't know if that's by design or if we somehow glitched the game, but it did in fact work. This mode is timed, however, so it's going to take you quite a few tries if you want to check off everything on the list, but you will earn currency the more and more of the tasks that you complete on each map. Personally, I thought it was pretty fun, a little tough for old gamer Joe, but enjoyable nonetheless, especially when I did have a partner with me. If a career mode doesn't appeal to you, then perhaps you'll enjoy the free play mode, where you can leisurely cruise around the different maps, learn the ins and outs of the game, and just have fun with it. This is great for practicing or just chilling out. Wavebreak also has a time attack mode, which was my personal favorite. Here you'll be competing either online or with up to four local friends trying to outdo one another's scores. And then you have a deathmatch mode, which was my least favorite because I'm not a fan of any style of deathmatch, but I do have to say a good amount of creativity went into this one. As you collect a higher score, you're able to purchase various weapons that are scattered across the map, so there's a bit of strategy to it as well that I could appreciate. Regardless of which mode you end up wanting to play, Wavebreak does a really really great job of offering multiplayer options. Sadly, during this review, I couldn't get a hold of any online players, but I loved how the online was integrated into this game with a very simple party system. I've also never really come across a game where the second monitor is a full-on screen for the other player. It was awesome playing with Silent Signs this way, and I loved having my own dedicated screen, but if you don't have that option, you can still do up to four-player split screen, and that worked just fine as well. I felt like regardless of which mode I was playing, I was always earning money and I was able to spend that money on a variety of different cosmetics for the bow or for the characters or even upgrade those characters' individual statistics. The last mode that I'll touch on real quickly here is a park creator mode, which you can actually participate in with online friends as well. I'm not much of a builder, but it seems well done for what it is and I think fans of that type of thing will really enjoy it and appreciate that it's here. Obviously, you have to like that Tony Hawk style of gameplay to get the most out of Wave Break, but I really enjoyed it. I think it's a well-made product. It's jam-packed with plenty of content that will keep you busy as well. Sure, after a while, you're going to play these maps enough where you'll be wishing there were a few more, but overall, it's a really fun, silly, arcade-style skater that I enjoyed playing throughout, especially with friends. I think that my enjoyment was only heightened by the visual presentation of this game. There's a ton of graphical options. I was blown away by that, and the game will actually monitor the performance of your computer, and it will tell you if you're getting below 60 frames per second, depending on the different toggles that you switch. So you can really get into the weeds with this one and make the game look pretty nice, depending on your hardware. 
Each world does feel pretty distinct from one another, despite the fact that there are only a few of them. You have an icy world, you have a more neon-soaked city, so pretty decent variety between the maps, and I thought that they all looked great. The water effects are not top-notch here, but they certainly get the job done. But yeah, how good Wave Break will look for you will, of course, depend on the hardware you're using. I was using a 2070 Super. I couldn't max the game out by any means, but still, I thought it looked great, and it ran just fine at 60 frames per second, whether I was in the split-screen mode, Mode, or I was using the dual monitors, performance was generally not an issue as long as I tweaked things to a point where they couldn't be. The 80s Miami Vice theme, yeah, I'm a sucker for it. So well done to the developers here in terms of visual presentation. And of course, to go along with that is an excellent retro synth soundtrack featuring some real artists and some of my favorites as well, like Time Cop 1983. I absolutely loved every single track that came on. It will feel like they repeat pretty quickly after a while because I think there's only a handful of them, but no, they're all fantastic, and I personally never got tired of hearing them. The only real glitch that I came across during my time with Wave Break was when the game reverted to split screen for some reason when we went back to single player career mode and the screen kind of awkwardly split and was just stuck that way. I think this is a glitch that will need to be ironed out, but again, that was really the only main technical hiccup that I came across. I ultimately really enjoyed Wave Break. I think they've done a great job of creating a Tony Hawk game on the water. It's a neat idea, and adding this Miami Vice theme does heighten this whole concept. I love the soundtrack, I like the visuals enough, and I think it controls just fine. There's a lot of multiplayer options as well, so it's a good game to play with friends, and hopefully an online community is built, and you even get that park creator to mess around with that. So, a well-made product that is chock full of content for you to enjoy. I want to thank you so much for watching the latest video from I Dream of Indie. We'd now like to take a moment to thank our great indie warriors who support us through channel memberships. Mitchell Hall, Kevalo, Bunny, Bill Tikas, Christian Cruz, Strict9, Rosie Syntax, Chris Jackson, Nathan Moore, Peach, Adriana, Amato, CJR, Jesse, Falco, Lombardi, C Coil, and Skepticism. Thank you for all you do for independent games, developers, publishers, and for I Dream of Indie. Everybody else, head down to the description box below or head on over to idreamofindie.com to learn more ways about how you can support our mission to bring a voice to the voiceless ones in gaming.